In this video here, we're going to take a look at conditional probabilities in Venn diagrams. We can also find conditional probabilities on a Venn diagram. And just like we saw for the previous video, we just simply restrict the sample space. So let's just think about two events here. So let's say we've got the events A and B. I could draw a Venn diagram. Nothing perfect, but let's just say this is our quick diagram here. We've got the events A here. and B. Okay, so this is A and this is B here. So now let's say we're looking for the conditional probability here of the probability of A conditioned on B. Probability of A conditioned on B. So the way that we restrict the sample space here now is because we're conditioning on B. What we're concerned about then is everything inside B here. So do this in red. What we're looking at now is just everything inside B here. Because that's what we're simply restricting the sample space to here. Okay. So again, let's just say a look at another example here. Let's say we're now looking at, let's do it in green, the probability here of B conditioned on A. So probability of B here given A. Well, now we're restricting the sample space here to just A. Okay. And do that like so. So for example, then the probability of B given A here. The actual region that we want then would simply be the intersection here because that's the only part of B that's in the sample space now this restricted sample space of A then okay so that would be this region here okay and the same is true here then for this probability for the probability of A given B so the reason that we want here is the intersection again because that's the only part of A that's in this restricted sample space here of B okay so that's a very kind of basic introduction there um, just simply finding conditional probabilities in Venn diagrams. So what we're going to do now is just take a look at a couple of practice questions here. Conditional probabilities in Venn diagrams. So if we take a look now at question one here, we've got S and T, which are two events, such so that the probability of S is 0.6, the probability of T is 0.35, and then the probability here, the intersection of S and T is 0.25. So for the first part here, we're to draw a Venn diagram to represent this information. Let's just start by doing that here. So it won't be perfect, but let's just draw the rectangle to begin with here. Let's say we get something that looks like this here. Now we've got two events here. We've got S and T. So let's just place our circles in here. We've got S here. That's S. We then got T here. Like so. When you're drawing a Venn diagram with the given information here, remember we work out from the middle of the Venn diagram or the intersection. We know the probability here for the intersection of S and T, that's 0.25. So let's just place that in the middle here. That's 0.25 there. That's our intersection there. So now for the probability of S here, well if the intersection is 0.25, this part here, so just this part, not including the intersection, that would be 0.6 minus the intersection here. So 0.6 minus 0.25. In this case here, that would give us 0.35. So this part here then, that's 0.35. And we do the same here for T. That's going to be 0.35 minus the intersection here of 0.25. And that would give us 0.1 there. Okay, so this part here, not including the intersection, that would be 0.1. And then finally here, we need this part here outside of the circle. So in that case then, that would be 1 minus everything inside the circle. So 1 minus 0.35 plus 0.25 plus 0.1. So in this case here, if you evaluate this, the bracket here comes to 0.7. We get 1 minus 0.7. And that would be 0.3 there. Okay. So in that case, then we get 0.3 here in the corner. So that's our Venn diagram. So that's complete. Part A done, hopefully, quite nice and straightforward there just to get us started. So now for B here, we're asked to find the probability of S given T. So this is a conditional probability here. Let's just write this down to begin with. Probability of S given T here. So in this case here, now we need to restrict the sample space. So let me just do this in a different color just to highlight this. 
But here I'm now restricting the sample space now to just T because we're conditioning on T. If we restrict the sample space here, we get something that looks like this here. So now, where can we find the probability of S within this restricted sample space? Well, that would be the overlap here. So it's going to be this part here that we need. So in that case, then, the probability here that we're looking for is going to be 0 0.25. That's going to be out of the total here of these probabilities. So that's going to be 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1. So 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1 so we're going to get 0.25 over 0.35 and we can simplify this here to give us 5 over 7 okay the probability of s given t is 5 over 7 so that's the answer to b there doing the same now for c here pretty similar we're now looking for the probability of t given s so in this case here again we're just simply restricting the sample space so again Let's do this in a different color now. Let's do this in, say, light blue here. So, restricting this now to S here. So, in this case, we just want S. It would be this circle here now. So, again, what region here would give us T? Well, that's going to be this 0 0.25 here. So, that's going to be the overlap again. So, it's 0 0.25 here. So, let me just go back to my original pen color probably a t here that's 0 0.25 that's the only part of t that's within that restricted sample space we get 0 0.25 and then we divide this here now by the total of the sample space here that's going to be 0 0.35 plus 0 0.25 so plus a 0 0.25 here so we simplify this here then we get 0 0.25 and that's over 0 0.35 plus 0 0.25. So that would give us um, 0 0.6 there. I've got 0 0.25 over 0 0.6. And if we evaluate this here, put this into your calculator if you need to, this would give you 5 over 12 there. Okay. That's the solution to C there. That would be, that's C. And then finally here for D. We're asked to find the probability of S given S union T. So now let's just restrict the sample space here. So in this case here, let's do this in green now. So S union T here, so that's going to be all of S and all of T. In other words, it's just going to be everything here inside the circle. So go around here one more time. We're going to have everything here in S and T, and that includes the overlap as well. So let's go back to our original pen color then. So the probability of S here, so in that case here then for S we've got two choices, we've got the 0 0.35, that's within S, and we've also got the 0 0.25 here as well. We're going to get 0 0.35, in fact let me just write that in the probability here, so the probability of S given S union T. So I said this would be 0 0.35 plus 0 0.25 plus 0.25. And this will be out of the total now within the circle. So it's going to be 0 0.35 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.1. So in other words, it would just be 1 minus. It's 0 0.3 here. That would be 0 0.7. Okay. So we simplify the numerator here. 0 0.35 plus 0 0.25. Well, we saw that here. That gives us 0 0.6. So we get 0 0.6 over 0 0.7. And in this case here, then, that would simply give us 6 over 7. Okay, so the probability of S given S union T here is 6 over 7. And there we have it, so that's the solution to D. And that gives the solution there to question 1. And finally then, if we take a look here at the very last question, question 2, we've got a Venn diagram below which presents information about two events, A and B. You can see the Venn diagram here. So we're now asked to find three probabilities below. So let's start off then with part A. So here we're looking for the probability of A intersection B complement. So this part here, part A, doesn't require any conditional probability. We simply need to use the Venn diagram to find this probability here. So for the probability then of A intersection B complement, using the Venn diagram here, well, this circle here represents the probability of A. 
We also want B complement here, so the intersection of B complement. That would exclude this intersection here. That would just simply leave us then with 0.4. That gives us the solution there to part A, so 0.4 there. Moving on to B now. We're looking for the probability here of A given B. So now we have conditional probability. We're looking for the probability of A given B. We're conditioning on B here. So we're now restricting the sample space here. And in this case, so if I just do it in a different color, let's do it in red. We're now restricting it here to B. Okay. Just go all the way around. We're restricting this now to be our sample space here. So in this case here now, well, my denominator here, that would be 0.15 plus 0.3. I've got 0.15 plus 0.3. And then for the numerator here, what do we actually want for this probability? Well, we're simply looking for the probability of A. So in terms of A then, the only part that contains A would be the overlap here. Okay, so that would be the 0.15. We get 0.15 over 0.15 plus 0.3. This gives us here 0.15 divided by 0.45. And 0.15 divided by 0.45, that's the same as one over three there. Okay, that's the probability there for B. And then finally for C here, well now we're looking for the probability here of A given B complement. Let's just write this down. It's the probability of A given B complement. So again now this is a conditional probability problem so we're now restricting the sample space here with b complement so where would b complement be here so b complement now would be this part here so this 0.4 it would also be the 0.15 so don't forget the 0.15 here as well that's also part of b complement so my denominator here like we said that would be 0.4 plus 0.15 that's everything that's not b and then the actual probability that we want here that's the probability of a well, that would simply be this 0.4 here okay that's going to be 0.4 there so now we simplify this here i've got 0.4 that's over 0.4 plus 0.15 giving me 0.55 and if we evaluate this here, we get 8 over 11. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to see there. And that gives the solution to the very last question here, question 2. And that brings the end of this video on conditional probability in Venn diagrams.